Without the equipment that adapts you to going underwater, diving's impossible. So to become a diver, you need to learn about scuba gear, the basics on how it works and how to choose it. Like most divers, you'll probably enjoy getting to know your gear. You find literally dozens of makes, styles, and models of scuba gear, which is great because it allows you to choose equipment that accommodates your size and preferences. How do you know what's best for you? After you learn the basics about what your gear does and how it works, as a beginner, your best bet is to have a pro at your paddy resort or dive center help you. The gear you invest in will last years with proper care. But like all technologies, scuba continues to advance. Stay up to date with the latest innovations. You'll probably trade up over time. Not because something older doesn't work anymore, but because there's something newer that you like better. There are some basics in choosing and caring for dive equipment that apply to virtually all your gear. The most important considerations in choice are suitability, fit, and comfort. Suitability means it's appropriate for the diving you want to use it for. Like choosing a full wetsuit for cool water, rather than a short wetsuit used in the warm tropics. Fit is important because a lot of gear doesn't work right if it's the wrong size. You get the right fit by choosing the right size. Comfort means the gear has the right feel and configuration. Properly adjusted gear that fits right is usually comfortable, but not always. If it's not comfortable, keep looking. After addressing suitability, fit, and comfort, secondary considerations include finding the cost and features that work for you, and making sure you have access to service, though dive operations almost always service the brands they sell. You can usually choose colors and styles that go with the rest of your kit. And remember the accessories that go with each piece. These little items add a lot to your enjoyment. Ask your dive professional for suggestions. Caring for your gear includes inspecting it for proper operation and for any wear or damage before each use. Never dive with any equipment that is not in good working order. Have something that's not right corrected before diving with it. After each dive, rinse everything in clean, fresh water and let it dry out of the sun before storing it. As reasonably possible, protect your gear from extended periods in direct sunlight. You'll learn that some pieces require additional maintenance and service by a professional. And follow any maintenance and service requirements in the manufacturer literature. You need a mask because your eyes must be in air to focus properly. Since this creates an airspace you must equalize, your dive mask must enclose your nose as well as your eyes. Never scuba dive with goggles because you can't equalize them. Choose a good quality mask made specifically for scuba diving. Your paddy dive shop can help you check the fit. After finding some that fit you, Look for a low profile and a wide vision field. The silicone color is usually either clear or black. You often can choose from different frame colors. With a new mask, you may need to scrub the interior with a cleaner. Check the manufacturer literature. Adjust the strap so it fits snugly but comfortably, with the strap over the crown of your head. A snorkel is standard equipment for recreational diving. It lets you breathe, look, swim, and rest with your face in the water or waves without wasting scuba air, or if you're low after coming up. You usually choose your mask and snorkel together. You attach it with a clip or snorkel keeper. Get one that fits comfortably when adjusted with the top at the crown of your head. Many divers like a snorkel that flexes away when you're not using it. Most scuba snorkels have self-drain valves to help you blow out water. And many have guards that reduce water splashing in. After choosing the right fit and options, you can usually match the color to your mask. Fins allow your powerful leg muscles to push you through the water. You can choose from adjustable fins, which you usually wear with wetsuit boots, 
and full foot fins, which fit like slippers. Since you don't use wetsuit boots, they're usually reserved for warm water. You choose fins based on blade and foot pocket size. Small bladed fins are suited to snorkeling, but not scuba. Be sure to get fins appropriate for scuba diving. Have a professional help you choose the right fit. Fins have options, including the materials they're made from, as well as splits and vents to improve performance. Adjustable fins may feature quick-release buckles or spring heels for convenience in adjusting, donning, and removing. Your paddy professional can help you choose from these options. Besides inspecting and adjusting them, you don't have to do much before diving other than closing the quick-release buckles if yours have them. Get full foot fins wet to make them easier to slip on. Regular fins aren't much use to someone with limited leg mobility, but there are other ways to get around. Webbed gloves allow such divers to swim with surprising strength. DPVs, or diver propulsion vehicles, are a fun way for any diver to be mobile underwater. But you should be able to use your legs or arms in case it has a problem. Your scuba kit is actually four equipment systems integrated into a single package. Your BCD, buoyancy control device, holds everything together. As you learned, you use it to control your buoyancy. Your cylinder supplies high pressure air to your regulator, which provides it to you when you inhale. Your weight system holds just enough lead to let you descend. Its quick release lets you easily drop your weight in an emergency. We'll look at each of the systems more closely next. Scuba gear is generally interchangeable, but because everything integrates, you usually select your scuba kit as a package that puts everything together to meet your preferences. Five components make up your BCD. It has a bladder you inflate and deflate to control your buoyancy. The bladder integrates with a harness or jacket with a band that securely holds your cylinder. The low pressure inflator lets you use it to add air directly from your cylinder by pressing a button. You use the other button to deflate the bladder or inflate it orally. Overpressure valves are designed to prevent rupturing from accidentally overfilling the bladder. Some of these have quick dump releases you can use to deflate the BCD. The weight system pockets hold lead weights, but you can release them quickly. You have options regarding BCD features. Beyond getting the right size and fit, some have more air capacity than others. Pockets and D-rings for storing and clipping accessories come in handy. Many divers like shoulder quick releases that make getting out of your kit easier. BCDs are among the most stylish pieces of gear, and you can choose from several looks. Adjust your BCD so it's snug, but not too tight while wearing your exposure suit. Inflate it to be sure it doesn't restrict breathing. After it's set, attach an emergency whistle to the low-pressure inflator and mount the hose retainers that hold some of the regulator components. When caring for your BCD, rinse the inside of the bladder as well as the outside. Drain it, and after drying, store it with a bit of air inside. Your regulator has five components. The first stage attaches to the cylinder valve and supplies air to the other components. You breathe from the second stage. It delivers air only when you inhale, or when you press the manual purge button. Your alternate air source is a second stage on a longer hose that you use to share in an emergency. You'll learn about other types of alternate air sources too. The low pressure inflator hose supplies air to your BCD inflator and your SPG, submersible pressure gauge, tells you how much air you have. An SPG may be separate or part of your dive computer and it may be on a hose 
or use a transmitter that sends air supply information to your dive computer. Ease of breathing is the most important consideration when you choose a regulator. Modern regulators meet the requirements for recreational diving, but the higher end models usually breathe the easiest. You'll choose between the yoke system or the DIN system. Many divers choose DIN with yoke system adapters. You can adjust many higher end regulators to keep the breathing optimal. Some have dive pre dive switches that avoid accidental air release when it's not in your mouth. Besides the popular second stage on a longer hose as your alternate air source, you may opt for an alternate inflator regulator, which combines a second stage with your BCD inflator. Some divers carry independent pony bottles, which would allow them to handle an air supply problem without buddy assistance. Preparing your regulator requires attaching these components to the appropriate ports, which you should leave to a scuba professional. Regulators are robust and reliable, but have a couple of maintenance considerations. When rinsing, keep the first stage dust cap in place or leave it attached to a cylinder so water doesn't enter the air inlet. Don't press the purge button when rinsing the second stage with fresh water because doing so could let water flow backward into it. Regulators require professional overhauls every one to two years. Have your dive center do this as required by the manufacturer. Scuba regulators are surprisingly simple. Air flows from the first stage to the second stage, which you can think of as a cup with a mouthpiece, a flexible diaphragm, and one-way valves. When you inhale, water pressure causes the diaphragm to flex inward, depressing the air valve lever. This releases air that you breathe in. When you exhale, the diaphragm relaxes, the lever rises, and the valve closes. One-way valves vent your exhalation into the water, where it rises as bubbles. Although there are variations, it is this simple design that makes scuba diving possible. Your scuba cylinder, sometimes called a tank, holds high-pressure breathing air. Made of steel or aluminum alloy, it has a chrome-plated valve that turns open and closed to enable or disable airflow to the regulator. You can choose from different sizes, and you match your regulator with respect to a yoke valve or DIN valve. Some DIN valves accept an insert so they can take yoke regulators too. All cylinders have markings stamped into the metal and labels stuck onto them with the working pressure and the dates of pressure tests and inspections. Your dive center checks these when you have your cylinder filled. You may see a cylinder with this marking, which means it's used with enriched air nitrox. You must be certified as an enriched air diver to use these cylinders. You'll learn more about enriched air a bit later. Follow these handling precautions. Don't leave a cylinder standing unattended, especially if your kit's set up. Lay it down, BCD up, so it doesn't fall. Block and restrain cylinders in a boat or car so they can't roll or slide. On boats, keep cylinders in their racks so they can't fall and injure someone or damage equipment. Scuba cylinders require pressure testing every two to five years and visual inspection annually. Have your local dive center do these for you. Open and close the valve gently and never completely drain it. Lay your cylinder down before and after diving, but for storage, keep it standing someplace it won't get knocked over, out of excessive heat. Scuba air must be specially filtered and filled with special breathing air compressors. So have your cylinder filled only at a professional dive resort or dive center. As mentioned before, your weight system's most important feature is a quick release that lets you drop enough weight so you float reliably in an emergency. Most BCD weight systems do this with two releasable pockets. It may also have small non-releasable weights you use for trim adjustment, that is, your balance in the water. 
Your BCD and weight placement determine trim and your instructor will show you how to adjust it for a level, horizontal position in the water. BCD integrated weight systems are the most popular, but some divers use separate weight belts. Your instructor may also have you use small accessory weights to help adjust your trim. These should be only a fraction of the weight you wear, so they don't need to quick release.